We're now moving on to about half past, no, it's six o'clock. The time is six o'clock. My heart is racing because I'm following my old, or my, it's still mine, still mine, Audi R8. Hey guys, welcome to Supercars of London and a slightly different daily vlog. I'm going on a bit of a road trip today, so I'm going to use this opportunity to take out the 2014-15 driven leasing Mini Cooper SD that I've been lent for the next week and a half. So we're going to jump in, head down south towards the Southampton area, and I will talk to you a little bit about the exterior, interior, engine, and do a bit of a first impressions review of this car because it's the first time that I've driven a Mini, so I thought that I would do such a video today whilst I'm covering a fair few miles. The interior of the car is John Cooper Works, which may have confused a couple of you when I posted the interior first rather than the exterior. So it's got very, very sporty interior. We've got this sort of dial here that lights up and becomes a bit of a disco ball when you turn into sport or green mode or just have it in mid mode. It's automatic and you've got paddles here as well. But I personally really quite like the interior. You've got a weird sort of carbon effect there. You've got loads of buttons everywhere. It just looks like everything has a purpose. My favorite bit is the engine start button. You just do that and then put your foot on the brake again and it starts up. I mean, that is pretty cool. You've got nice little Alcantara touches around here, stitching, um, and overall, I think it's safe to say this car probably isn't that good at fitting two normal sized humans in the back. We have tried and it's a bit of a tight squeeze. I have to come quite close to the steering wheel just so that someone can fit right behind me. So let's strap you up to the um, suction cup and get on our way. So guys, how are you all doing today? Did you enjoy yesterday's monsoon video? That was honestly one of the most craziest, bizarre days I've ever had. Um, this is where I was driving the first part of the video yesterday and pretty much all of the water has gone and I apologize greatly for the awful experiment of holding a piece of paper out the window. I thought that it would like start getting holes in it and stuff, but it didn't. So <laughs> that was a pretty, pretty much a, a fail. Um, but you know what, moving away with this car, the first thing that you notice, the, well, the first time that I ever drove a Mini, I was like, is this car got power steering? It's very, very heavy steering. And I think that it's weighted to try and give you a bit more feel in the corners, which helps and works because it is a lot of fun to drive and go through some nimble tight turns. There is a slight bit of understeer, but I think because this is a front wheel drive car, it can't really handle quite high speed cornering. And I'm just gonna leave it in auto to begin with because that's how I've been driving this car. I've treated it a bit like the BMW X5, a bit of a cruiser, but this car does pack a bit, but this car does pack a bit of a punch, which I will get to in a minute. How I got this car is a bit of a story in itself. So, or how I got the BMW X5. Driven Leasing are a leasing company based very close to where I live. And they have dealt with a huge array of clients, friends of mine, but also high net worth individuals. And they came to me and said, do you want to borrow some of our press fleet cars that we're able to get our hands on? Because they deal with mass numbers of leasing cars. Some of the dealerships, some of the manufacturers in the UK here allow them to uh, drive some press cars. So at the moment, or when I got the BMW X5, that was the first loan car that I was given from Driven Leasing. And Driven Leasing wanted me to go out and try and find an everyday car that could sit alongside my new Lamborghini. I'm allowed to say it now because the video's out. The Lamborghini, I don't want to fall into the trap that the R8 fell into, where I drove it every day and the specialness went a little bit. The main thing that I find with this car is the steering is so heavy, which basically um, is down to the fact that they are trying to create a really, really fun and direct steering sort of go-kart. And that leads me on to, can I go? Yep. Leads me on to sport mode. Sport mode has made a couple of my passengers laugh I don't go in it too often, but when I do, it is a little selector down or by the gear stick. Once you select it into sport mode, on the big screen here, 
you get sport mode, maximum go-kart feel. And then it's got a picture of the Mini with a rocket <laughs> and a go-kart. I mean, if that was anything to spur you on to go fast, then a rocket and a go-kart is exactly that. Having just mentioned sport mode, I'm gonna put my foot down now without sport mode. Quick. And now I'm gonna put it into sport mode. And go in the paddles. And you can hear, I mean, <laughs> you can hear it coming through the speakers, but at the same time, it's quick and it handles corners amazing. And I went from the first time that I tried steering quite quickly, I was in normal mode and it did feel like it was understeering a bit there. But as I was coming around that corner for the first time in sport mode, driving this car on a bit of a corner, it handled it really well. Got another Mini there. It's a 2008 standard Mini Cooper. So got no chance against a car like this. And we've got Mini Cooper diesel in front, the 2015 one. Is it a five door? It is a five door. Look, we're cruising together. It's a Nardo Grey Mini Cooper diesel, 15 plates. So it's slightly newer than this one, but it isn't the Mini Cooper S. The S has two exhaust tips at the back. This has only got one on the left. Oh, I'm gonna annoy it. So I can't remember what mode I'm in now. Okay, I'm back in mid mode. I've taken it out of sport mode. And the one stat that I do get caught up on cars is the price. I sometimes talk about brake horsepower, I sometimes talk about top speed, but top speed is pretty useless when you're driving it on public roads anyway. So, and 0 to 60, I sometimes talk about 0 to 60, but I don't know any of those stats on this car. However, when I collected this car from Driven Leasing, I did find out how much this car cost because it is the most important statistic involved in any car when there is a potential owner involved. So this car, basic spec, is around 20 to 21,000 pounds. And then once you add options like John Cooper Works interior, metallic paint potentially outside, the white stripe roof, wing mirrors, I'm pretty sure, go on. I'm pretty sure they are all optional extras. I'm not 100% sure, but the auto gearbox obviously as well is um, a cost. I reckon this car spec'd up would cost between 24 and 26 thousand pounds. Now, if you are looking for a family hot hatch in that price range, is this the car that you'd buy? Let me put myself in let me put myself in that position. If I had a family, two kids, would this be the car that I'd buy? No. I have got nothing bad to say about how this car drives, about the technology involved in this car. For me, the minis don't look how I want a car to look. And that's down to my personal opinion. I'm sure there are many owners out there that love the minis. I understand them. I think that they're pretty cool and quirky at the same time. But a five door Mini Cooper SD, I don't know. What's, you can nearly get a brand new Ford Focus RS for that price. I know you're paying a little bit more, but maybe you're getting a better car. Oh, that was a long but productive meeting. And it's now time to head back up the M3 through the average speed checks and back up to Watford. And there could potentially be my R8 in this video. I thought I'd check in. I'm cruising nicely on the M3. And one thing that I have really noticed in this car is how well it handles the road. I've driven a few hot hatches and small cars recently, one being the smart car. And for me and the i3, both obviously weren't very aerodynamic in the way that it cut through the air. And it made a huge difference when you were driving on the motorway as to how much you got blown around by crosswinds or just in general, the way that the 
world works, you just got blown around a lot. And the one thing that I have really noticed on this car especially, is how well it handles the road, the speed, and in general, the suspension of this car is fantastic. It's just very sort of cushioning when you're cruising at 70 miles an hour. But moving between lanes is absolutely fine. There seems to be either no crosswind or I'm just cutting through it very, very well. The car is quite low to the ground. Its center of gravity is obviously very, very good. And I just thought, do you know what? I'm actually gonna to touch upon this because I have had bad experiences in the past with said smart car where you almost get blown from lane to lane because it's just very windy and the car isn't built to be good going through the cutting the wind thing i've definitely just made that sentence up but you can hear the wind there is wind outside you can hear it so i'm very very stable on the road it's just a really impressive aspect to having a small car that doesn't get blown around a lot which I suppose is, is quite a big deal especially when if you are a new driver or an inexperienced driver and you've got a car that blows you around all of the time you're not sure how to counter steer you're not sure what to do and it becomes quite unsafe and look there's a Toyota IQ there prime example I'm sure that is dreadful with crosswinds because it's so tall and very small it just gets battered around and if you're buying that as your first car and then all of a sudden the first or second time you're on a motorway you're getting blown around lane to lane it's quite dangerous so this car is a really really strong car in terms of cutting through air coping with high speed or coping with speed on the motorway and just in general i think that is a very impressive point to consider in this car we're now moving on to about half part no it's six o'clock the time is six o'clock my heart is racing because I'm following my old, or my, it's still mine, it's still mine, Audi R8. So make sure that you are tuning in tomorrow to see the vlog of when my R8 is back on the Supercars of London channel, but not for long. Anyway, I am now gonna be going back to SB, starting tomorrow's vlog today. So it's gonna be a weird overlap, but regardless, my R8 is back, so hopefully you've enjoyed this vlog. A bit of a review on the Driven Leasing Mini Cooper SD. I've had a lot of fun driving today. I'm now absolutely shattered, and I've got to go home and edit, still film the intro to the next vlog, and then try and do some emails, so I'm still all go. But I don't care, because the Lamborghini dream is coming true very, very soon. Woo! bit of a chicane there thanks for watching guys appreciate all of your support as always and i will see you tomorrow for a very special vlog cheers guys